Pixel, and I'm gonna be very honest with you right off the bat. I'm going to have a very hard time holding back my excitement today, because because uh, <laughs> if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you'll know that I am heavily, heavily invested in and a huge fan of what Edelkrone produces. Edelkrone being a Turkish company that produces motion control systems from sliders to jibs to turntables to you name it. Anything you need, you've got access to. And today I'm going to be unboxing and reviewing probably one of the most exciting pieces of equipment that I've ever reviewed from Metal Crone on my channel. I am so incredibly excited. Like I've, I've, been, I've been itching to share this with you just so I could get a chance to play with it. So today we're gonna to be looking at the brand new Head Plus V2 along with the Focus Plus Pro, uh, their focusing module for manual lenses which is an other complete game changer. Every single piece of equipment that I have, I use every single day for every single shoot. You can see I'm using it right now for my, for my video right now. If you've watched my channel for any length of time, you're very familiar with all the camera, the my camera magic that I love to do, and you can thank Edelkrone for all of that awesome stuff. So that's enough of me shooting off my mouth. All right, I'd already recorded an entire unboxing video and an overview video. And I spend about 20 minutes in, in editing on this and I went, this is too long. <laughs> so this is actually after the fact, I've already recorded everything else, but I'm gonna give you this little consolidation of what's in the box and the new features, just so we can jump into having fun with the equipment and getting everything set up. So Focus Plus Pro, in the box you get the Focus Plus Pro, three different lengths of 50 millimeter rods, which are standard, so it'll work with any rig you've got. And it comes with an, uh, with an additional larger focus rod, uh, um, um, rod clamp, but it comes pre-installed, pre-connected with a 50 millimeter uh, clamp right here. Already connected to my lens, you're gonna get three focus gears that you can connect to the focus gears of your manual lenses. This is a lens I'm using for demo, it's my Sigma lens, but it's not a, fo a manual focus, it's a focus by wire. This is not what you wanna use, I'm just using it to demonstrate, but you don't wanna use lenses like this because you're not gonna get consistent perfectly accurate results every single time. So just a little disclaimer there so you know. You're gonna get three of those three of those focus gears. You get the focus chart and the focus chart stand and you're gonna see it's got two grooves. The top longer groove is where you're gonna connect the focus chart and on the bottom that's for your tape measure when you're setting your lenses. Lastly, you're gonna get documentation, that very well-written documentation over here, but you can go to edelkrone.com, scroll to the bottom, click on user manuals, and they have an entire beautiful library of um, video tutorials right there. And you're gonna get three pieces of documentation here which are actually significant. Registering your equipment. Why? Lifetime accidental warranty. Instagram, if you post your stuff on Instagram, uh, you have a chance of, and of course, uh, making sure to uh, to tag uh, Edelkrone in it, you have a chance of winning $250 store credit, which they pull, they pick a new winner every single day. So that's pretty cool. It's worth doing it, right? Just give yourself a little bit of, give yourself some credit, damn it. So in the, for, as far as the Head Plus V2 is concerned, you get this big bad boy, the Head Plus V2 itself, uh, the L bracket, any kinds of little extra screws and doohickeys, you need to connect all of this kind of stuff. And again, user manuals with similar documentation as far as that goes. So, Focus Plus Pro, what are the new features? Number one, this is independent. <laughs> it's independent, you don't have to have this tethered to an existing system. So if you have a small rig or any kind of camera rig and you just wanna have an independent focus puller that you can use, the range on these things is absolutely fantastic. In fact, the new equipment even has better range uh, and better connectivity than the original ones. You just have to buy this. You don't have to buy the rest of the system. Okay, so that's a really big deal. Right over here, you can see really close up, we've got a power on off and you can set in the app or the remote to auto shut off after a certain amount of time, whatever time you designate. And this is fantastic because it helps to save your batteries. The Focus Plus Pro comes pre-installed with a Canon LPE6 battery bracket, but you always have optional DC input. I like to always have both options with all of my equipment. So I always get the DC cable and the battery bracket if the battery bracket doesn't come included. I might wanna connect it to power to, to forget about uh, uh, using batteries if I don't need to, but I love to have the battery option if I'm in an area of the studio that doesn't have access to power or if I'm taking it outside. So it's very handy. 
last but not least, one of the very cool features about this is if you actually connect this to your system and if it's paired, you don't need to use the app or the remote to, um, to set the focus. You just use your lens, it's connected, the Focus Plus Pro is already connected and paired. You focus using the lens itself, which is much quicker, set the key, you're all set. And it'll save the input. As long as it's connected, it'll save that input. So all of Edelkron's new equipment, or at least most of Edelkron's new equipment, all has a manual feature so that you don't have to use the app for setting keys and stuff like that. So it's a really super dope feature. Now, the Head Plus V2, this bad boy. What comes new in it? Well, you've got link inputs for future extensibility. I guess that's a teaser for things to come, I suppose. <laughs> um, you can either get it with uh, a DC cable or a battery bracket. Like I said, I get both. So I have the DC cable and I get the battery brackets. In this particular case, I got the two LP6. Anything that, any Edelkron piece of equipment that uses batteries, uh, you don't have to fill both battery brackets for it to work. You can use just one or two. Uh, you can get LPE6 or the NPF batteries, which are larger and have a little bit more juice, albeit they're a little bit heavier as far as that goes. If you flip it over here, a new feature that's I'm sure a lot of people are gonna find really handy is a push-pull lock pin. So when you actually have this set up on your slider and you're moving it, let's say you're moving your slider, it won't swing around. Albeit it's not a super, super robust lock, so you don't wanna go shaking your equipment around. It's just to keep it from, from from flipping around just to keep it from bumping into anything, which is a handy little feature. Right here at the top, if I can get some light on it, you can see it's got a cold shoe right here at the top and right underneath, if you look right underneath there, if you, if you remove it, there's a tiny little magnet underneath and that magnet is for your remote. It magnetizes on top of it. Now a little note here, it's not a very strong magnet. So if you have it on top, I really believe that the magnet's only really intended for when you're just doing regular movements like that side to side. It's just so the vibrations do, don't knock it off essentially, but I wouldn't go tipping it. So if you're using the slider plus V5 with the motion module V3, which I've demonstrated, you can check that out right here. Okay. If you check, if you uh, look at that video, you have the option of tilting. I wouldn't have the remote sitting on top of it if you were tilting it because the remote could slip off. It's a very it's a weak magnet from my experience. So it's just there to keep it from, for vibrations. Apart from that, it's got uh, better connectivity and better range on this as well. And little ease of use, little daily ease of use things just for setting it up and everything like that. Just kind of refined and polished the design so that it's a little bit easier to work with. And of course, last but not least, just like the original Head Plus, this can be used entirely manually. You don't have to use the app. You can just set all of your keys by hand. So we're gonna have a little bit of a time lapse that you're not gonna see where I'm gonna get everything set up. I'm gonna start playing around with it. I'm gonna familiarize myself with it. And then uh, I'll walk you through and get some awesome looking sample footage. All right, so welcome back. It's been four or five days of me shooting B-roll of every single thing I own. Not for YouTube videos for fun. I've been having so much fun <laughs> with this new equipment. I have a lot of information I want to unload, so I'm going to jump right into it. One of the things I love about Autochrome, why I stand behind them as a company, is not only their quality, the reliability, the precision, their amazing customer service. That's not the only reason why I'm with Autochrome. It's because every single time you get a new little piece of kit, it exponentially improves your entire setup, whether you start with older equipment or new equipment. Every single time you add one little doohickey to their modular system, it adds value to almost every piece of equipment that you own by them, including the Jib One, Pan Pro, Slider Plus V5, Motion Module V3, Turntable Kit, you name it. It adds value to everything. Let's start with the Focus Plus Pro. When I first got this, I thought it was really cool, neat. I get to play with a new piece of gear and stuff, but I honestly, out of these two different, t these two new pieces of equipment, I didn't really know what value this would bring to me. I work with Sony lenses, the a7 III and the a6400. I'm pointing up, although it's over here. Um, with fantastic autofocus lenses, I work with the Sigma art lenses all the time, or the contemporary. So I've got very reliable Sony quality autofocus. So I really didn't know what I was gonna benefit from this until I started to play with it. Until, until I started to research lenses online, because I've 
completely only relied on good autofocus for all of my videos. But I realized that when it comes to cine lenses, when it comes to special like Sire anamorphic lenses, they're all manual. And the only reason why I never invested in them is because I didn't have a piece of kit that would allow me to take control of it because I'm a one man show. I run my own, I do everything, all the filming myself. So I needed something to be able to control that focus for me. When I'm doing B-roll shots or when I'm doing, you know, talking head videos like this, I completely depended on it. Until now. I, this is unlocking that. Now, let me explain to you the reason why you would want to invest in something like this if you do a lot of B-roll, you do a lot of shots and you play around with different lenses. We'll take this focus chart and we'll take this extremely real, not fake plant. Okay, right here. You can see it's extremely real and not fake whatsoever. And I have an identically extremely real and not fake plant right over here. Okay, so let's just, just a little, just establish that. If I wanna do a shot, I could never do shots where I go from object A like that, you can see it's focused on me. I wanna get a nice blurry background so you can see what I'm talking about. To that, because you see it just shifted focus to that ugly bloke in the background in the middle of that shot. So the only way I've ever been able to do stuff like that is to make sure that there was some kind of an overlap. So I do something like that and make sure the other one is the next thing that the autofocus point catches. So I was always working around that or to always make sure that it's tracking that object throughout the shot. But when you're using a follow focus like this, you just get a nice smooth focus and it stays focused from one thing to the next. It also makes for a more fluid focus. You can see here, if I focus from foreground to background, it creates a sudden focus. It's not a smooth, gradual focus shift. So it just feels a little bit less pro. Then comes the Head Plus V2. What's the advantage? What does this, what has value has this brought to my system? There are a ton of features that this thing comes with. It comes with a bunch of, you know, quality of life and an ease of use type of features. But the big, big deal is your ability to set keys manually. This is such a big deal. <laughs> You're working with one unit that controls the pan and tilt altogether, and there's no using apps and moving back and forth. Although it's perfectly fine. I've done it a million times. I've done all of my B-roll. I've done all of my camera reviews and all of my product reviews with that system up until now on my channel for years. But when you can control something manually, set it, set a key and move on, that has, I can honestly say that's probably cut my workflow down, the, the time it takes for me to produce videos by two thirds. It is completely, I, I can do double to triple the work per day using this. It is such a gorgeous system to work with. Let's set it up, okay? So we're gonna start by what I'm first gonna do, and I just want a, a little disclaimer here, my lenses, currently that I'm using this with are focus by wire lenses, AKA not mechanical manual lenses. I bought this for the autofocus. I didn't buy it for the manual. This is not the type of lenses you generally want to work with. You're not going to get reliable results. I can get, because this is a decent focus by wire system on the Sigmas, it's, it's decent. It's not great. I can get reliable uh, uh, focus between two objects just to demonstrate what it does. But if I start to get too fancy with this, it starts to lose focus because it's not, focus by wire doesn't give you consistent results every single time. It'll, it kind of works with a bit of an accelerometer and stuff like that. So it's not optimal. Just take that into account, but I'll demonstrate it nonetheless, just so you can see what kind of shots you can get. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the L bracket off the top over here. What we're gonna do is set it up with all the equipment that we're going to be that we're gonna be connecting to it. So I'm gonna connect the entire rig. Now a little note here. I've got a Manfrotto quick release plate that does not come included. If you, Edelkron actually have their own quick release plate that's actually compatible with multiple different types of, of quick release plates, which is pretty awesome. I'm gonna connect my camera over here, lock it in place, and I have my focus over here. I wanna press it in and give it a little bit of pressure to make sure the teeth are holding, and then I'm gonna screw it down to make sure it's nice and tight, not too tight. You don't want to like, it doesn't need to be excessively tight, but you, I'm putting a little bit of pressure on here to make sure it's holding the gears before I tighten it down. This will make sure that it doesn't slip. The other thing too is when, if you're using a quick release, be careful to make sure that it's angled in a way that it's actually sitting flush against it. So this over here, when it's calibrating, this little gear on the top is going to create a hard stop 
against it. Because what it can do is once it goes underneath, it can ever so slightly lift the Focus Plus Pro off of it and that can cause the gear to slip and then you have to reset it. Just a little, a little tip in case, you're, uh, in case you're setting it up for the first time. You're also gonna wanna connect your battery. In this particular case, I'm using batteries. So it takes the Canon LP6 batteries. It says it in the back too. There's a little LP6 right here, right on the battery bracket. Clip it in. We don't have to turn it on. It's just so you've got the proper weight. Now, once that's done, there's a little magnetized Edelkron peg. So if you can get that in focus, okay. It's got a little, you can't see here, but it's got a very subtle Edelkron logo right here in the front. And this is gonna go on the side where you will, where, the, where you originally had it connected to uh, the head plus, and you're gonna balance it like this. Now, I already balanced this before, so I'm not sure if it's still balanced. There you go. It should sit up like that. If it falls forward or back, or side to side, or both, then you wanna adjust it until it can just balance like this, and then magnetize it right here back in the front. Now we're good to go. So that's where this bad boy comes in. That same hole I just used, I'm gonna slide it right here. There you go, okay. Why do you wanna balance it first? You wanna balance it because if you don't, it's putting more pressure on the motors. That decreases the longevity of the motor over the long term. It drains more battery and you're more likely gonna get less accurate shots because the motor's fighting more in one axis than the other. This just helps to take good care of your equipment essentially. Power them on, one, two, and three. Now for this particular case, I'm going to pair it with my Edelkron remote, just to show you a couple of keys. And I'm gonna show you, let me turn on my camera. Pair and connect, select the products, slide module V3, head plus B V2, and focus plus pro. Press right, connect and connecting, and we're good to go. Okay. so. I can control this manually. You can see once it calibrates, lens calibration, it goes, it's finding the hard stops. It's gonna go around and find the hard stop on the other end. This is an infinity lens, meaning it doesn't have mechanical hard stops. So it needs this little thing sticking out to find the hard stop. And then it asks you, are you on macro? I'm not. If on the, on the remote, it's gonna say yes or no for macro. On the app, it says macro or infinity. This is an infinity. It just means it'll just keep going infinitely. I hit no, not for macro, we're good to go, okay? Now, I can slide manually. I can then pan, tilt. I can use a remote like that, set a key. And usually this will beep, but I turn the beep off because sometimes, sometimes I shoot videos in the middle of the night, like at five o'clock in the morning, I don't want to wake everybody up. Slide over to the side. Then pan over here, lift it up a little bit. Key number two, there we go. And then I just hit one. There you go. But that's not why you're here. Oh, a little note. You heard a little noise. I have a shotgun right, right there. Sorry for the earphone noise if it was loud. This motor is it's dead quiet. The vi what you're hearing right now is the reverberation through an acoustic table. So it's the vibration of the motor. It's not the sound of the motor that's reverberating through the thing. I just left it there just so you can hear it on a hard surface. If you're gonna use it on a hard surface like this, I would recommend putting like a towel or something that can mitigate, mitigate the vibrations. So you're not, as soon as you have something that dampens the vibration, it won't make any noise. If you have it on a tripod, it's a non-issue. You won't even hear anything. But what I want to do is I want, the whole reason you want to use the Focus Plus is you can see the time it took me to just to do a simple shot. I want to control the focus, I want to control the pan and tilt, and I want to control the slide using the Slider Plus V5, this is the long edition, the Motion Module V3, the Head Plus V2, and the Focus Plus Pro. Slide it over, like that. Set my focus on my first shot. Set my first key, key number one, slide it over manually, focus on the skull, adjust my focus, perfect, I hit key two, hit record, and we move, notice it's not shifting focus onto my background camera, over to the 
skull and bullseye. Not bad. Stop recording. Okay. <laughs> See how easy that was. Now, like I said, this is not a very dramatic focus pull from something from the background or the foreground. I'm not doing multiple keys, three or four keys. If I did, there's a good chance because this is a focus by wire lens, it would not end up being tack sharp because it's not, it's not gonna give you consistent results. Just be aware of that, okay? If you're using a mechanical lens, however, that has its own hard stops and everything is very mechanical, you're good to go, okay? So this is just giving you a quick idea on setting keys. Now, for the last demo on the Slider Plus V5, the motion module V3, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you a, a very cool, very special shot. So what I've done for this particular case, because I don't have a manual lens, I'm gonna be relying on the autofocus system. So I've set this back to autofocus and I've recentered this and I've resynced this, but now I'm pairing it with the app because I'm gonna need access to a few different features. So I'm pairing it with the app. So now I've got the head plus and the motion module V3, uh, V2 for the head plus. Now they're paired. And now I've centered it using my camera's level. So I turn on my camera and you've got the camera level. Everything's nice and good. And now I'm gonna hit, instead of just doing regular keys, I'm gonna hit target mode. And there's gonna be a, lot of, a little pop-up that walks you through the calibration process. So I'm gonna click okay. It's gonna, it asks you to level it and center it. That's already done, so I hit done. Is it on the ground or tripod? It's on the ground or table in this case. Is your motor on the right or the left? In my case, it's on the left. Now, if I was working with a manual focus lens, it would walk me through how to set up and teach the system how to work, how to work with that particular manual lens. Every manual lens works differently. In this case, I'm going with autofocus. And you're gonna see some of the limitations of working with an autofocus because it's gonna be shifting focus from foreground to background elements. Now, now that it's just synced in its normal mode, um, when it was synced in its normal mode, I had, I had access to six keys. So pose one, two, three, four, five, six but it's changed now. Since I'm in target mode right now, I have different options. The three top, uh, the, the three on the top row are target one, target two, and target three. And on the bottom row, it's slider position A, position B, and position C. Because it's gonna work differently now. Now I'm setting it to auto target. So what we're gonna wanna do is move this over, and I'm gonna aim this, I'm gonna turn my camera on, I'm gonna hit record, so you can see. What's up? There's me in the background and I'm gonna aim it. Now, normally what you'd wanna do is aim it directly at this clocks and color skull, not sponsored, just a fan. But I, uh, by the time you see this review or this video, um, they're probably gonna firmware update this, but a little glitch that I imagine is probably gonna get ironed out very soon because these problems don't usually last is that when it sets the target, you're gonna see when it sets the target, it's gonna readjust itself by around an inch. So you kind of lose your target in that case. So I'm gonna actually aim just above it. And I've got a little crosshairs over here so you can see exactly where it's aiming. So you can see the precision of this system. So I'm actually aiming above it and I'm gonna press and hold on target one. There you go. Then it asks you to move over and aim at your object again. So again, I'm gonna go right above it. And you're gonna see when I hit done, it readjusts onto the skull. It's perfectly focused because I'm using autofocus. So that's number one set. Now, if I move it, you're gonna see that it's following the target all on its own, auto-targeting. Now I wanna break that tangent, so I'm gonna move it. And when I did this, I could see on my app that it kind of lost the connection. And I'm gonna do this on purpose because I wanna now, in the second one, I wanna focus on Takemura. And again, I'm gonna focus above his head slightly. So something like that, target one, slide it over, and focus in that same spot, roughly, and hit done, and it's gonna target onto his hairline. So you can see it's right here, right on his hairline right there. Good. Now I'm gonna turn it again. If I don't turn it first, what it does is it tracks it. Now I don't wanna track it. The third, I'm gonna make it this focus chart. So I'm gonna go above, target three, move it over a little bit, something like that, and done. Good enough. It's focusing right here, right on the bottom of the target. Remember that. We're gonna see if it repeats that accurately. Now, my targets are set. If I want to change targets, I just click on the target and you're going to see it's very, very gradually going to move over like that. Nice and buttery smooth. Those are the kinds of shots you normally want to have and right where we left it. Okay. Now I'm going to break that connection. 
I'm gonna move this out of the way, just so it's breaking that connection. I'm gonna move it back over here and I'm gonna set slider position A. I don't care about the pen and tilt. I just care about the slider position. So slider position A, and then slider position B, I'm gonna move it to the other end and I'm gonna do slider position B. Now I'm gonna target it back on that first target just to start off our shot. With a lot of systems, a lot of like other slider systems and stuff like that, you kind of have to reset it back to key one. In this particular case, you can start wherever you want. So if you're if you're at key two and you want to go from key two to key one, just hit play and you're good to go. So now it's perfectly set on that skull, right on the crosshair. Now I'm gonna start my slide and I've set the speed to around 23 and I'm gonna click on slider position A. And it's gonna start to move and as it does, nice and gentle, because I want a super smooth shot, like that. Beautiful, gradual, slow in. Now while it's moving, I want it to shift to position two. So I click on target two and watch how it very smoothly shifts focus to create this beautiful seamless transition. There's no jarring movements. You can control that. You can make, if you want to go fast, you can double tap it, but that's not how you normally want to do it. Right onto Takemura. Beautiful. And now onto target three. And you get a little progress bar on it, letting you know exactly how much of the shot Let's move it all the way over. Remember, it should it should aim below, right down here somewhere, if it's accurate. Lovely. Look at how amazingly accurate this is. Now, think about the potential of this kind of shot. If you check out my Lord of the Rings book review, you can check it right here. Just check out the first 10 seconds, the, the intro to that video, okay? And what you're gonna notice is I have a slider shot, and in that slider shot, um, you start with one book on the table and then two, three, four fade into the shot while the camera's moving, okay? Take that and put it in the context of something like this. And you'll see exactly where these kinds of shots come in handy. So how do you do that with this? You, do ex you play through exactly the kind of shot that you want, hitting the keys when you want to, but you hit the little record button on the bottom while you're doing it, and it'll record. You record the whole thing and then stop and then you rewind back to the beginning and then you can just play and rewind play and rewind exactly that same exact shot over and over and over again with all the keys you want throughout the entire shot it's absolutely stellar this piece of equipment unlocks this ability for you and it unlocks it for me and i'm doing everything on my own. I don't have a camera crew. I don't have, you know, $75,000 camera equipment. It's just me, my cool little toy, and I can get all of these very, very professional looking shots. But there's more. So let's take this whole kit and shift over to the Jib One. All right, we're now set up on the Jib One with the Pan Pro. I've got batteries and everything, and let's power this on and sync it and get it ready to go. Now, it's already balanced, just to save time. So you can see it's nice and balanced here. Now let's manually pair it. Pair and connect, Pan Pro, Jib 1, Head Plus V2, Pair and Connect. What's really impressive is, this is a, I'm an early adopter. This is a brand new product that just hit the market. And um, they already had a substantial firmware update. Just to show you how much they stay on top of their products. One of the things, one of my qualms about other products in the past is that they'll promise updates for months and it never comes. The product just never, never, they never fix glitches. So it made it unusable for me. And I work professionally. If, if my equipment doesn't work, I can't shoot my YouTube videos. So it's unacceptable to me. So I don't have the Focus Plus Pro on this particular case. Again, I'm gonna go with the fully uh, uh, AF lenses on this. However, if you wanted to, you got the Head Plus, you know the whole drill on setting it up. So let me just fix my exposure a little bit. Here we are, and I'm going to set a couple of targets here. So we got target number one, Takemura, target number two. Everything that I just said, targeted mode, uh, uh, setting keys, all of that is exactly the same. But now we have access to a jib that gives us this with the pan. If you get the pan pro with it, you get lateral movement as well. So you get this whole range of movement that you've got over here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure I've got I clear the table. Let's hit the record button. There we go. And now I'm gonna set a couple of different targets. So let's, I love doing this with a macro lens too. So target number one, let's look up like that. 
And when you're setting your keys, there's no issue with the whole retargeting thing. It's not really an issue. So I'm just setting it to regular poses. So it says pose one. And then for the second one, let's go up here a little bit and target down at Takemura. I love this guy. He honestly is my favorite character from Cyberpunk. No spoilers, won't say nothing. And then the third one, let's look up at this dope skull. Let's move it nice and close to the shot. Now I'm using an ultra wide, so he's a little bit out of the shot. There we go. Key three. Let's go back to Takemura, but we're gonna go sideways. A little bit, nice depth of full field. Pose four. We're gonna come back to here. Actually, let's focus on uh, my microphone up at the top. Boop. A little behind the scenes action for you. Pose five and pose six will be my headphones. Boop. My monitoring, well not really monitoring headphones, they're gaming headphones. The HyperX headphones. There you go. All set. Let's give it a shot. So let's set the speed. I'll set it to roughly 50, just so it doesn't take too long, and pose one. Uh, clears the table. That's a bullseye. Holy smokes. Pose two. A little tip I realized a couple months ago. I realized that I had my Pan Pro, bullseye. I realized that my Pan Pro, oh shit, yeah, I'm recording. Uh, I realized my Pan Pro was set a little bit too tight. So what would happen was when I would try to adjust it, move it manually, I didn't realize I was actually unscrewing it. Wow. Pose four. Back to Takemura. I have to say it like that because he's cool and he's tough, so I like saying it with a tough voice. Takemura. You can't say ta Takemura. Ne. Pose five. Looking up at my mic. And post six. Over to my headphones. This is a brand new pro. Look at how beautifully that works. I mean, just think about the kind of shots you can get with something like this. And when I got the Pan Pro, it unlocked my ability to basically shoot everything in my room. It wasn't locked to a single axis. Now I can go all over the place. Set it and forget it. I love what Edelkron produces. I reach out to Edelkron regularly. When they update with new gear, I legitimately get excited. There's a lot of people that come up with new products. I'm like, oh, cool, a new product. When Edelkron puts out a new product, I legitimately, I get goosebumps because to me, I love this kind of stuff. This is my side passion. So thank you for joining me. Thank you to Edelkron and specifically to Asude, who's, who's, who works at Edelkron, who is the guy who's always taking amazingly good care of me. So thank you very much for that. And uh, I'll see you in my next video. All right, take care.